Tour of Flanders 2020 was an outrageous race. A lot of attacking from a very uh, from very far out. And obviously, at some point, the move went Alaphilippe attacked first, Van der Poel followed, then Van Aert bridged across. And this was the move. Three um, three strong riders, about 35 kilometers to go. Gap was already 20, like only 10, 15 seconds, but it, it was going up quite a lot. So this is what we're going to see. Obviously, if you don't know, Alaphilippe crashed um, in the break. And I just want to go through what I thought had happened and whose fault it was and everything else. So obviously, I'll just get the laser pointer up. Uh, so we can all see it well. Mobike here on the left-hand part. Van Aert, Van der Poel, and Alaphilippe. Alaphilippe's got his hand up his bars, and you'll see in a minute what he's doing. Next part, this is the motorbike stuck here. This is the Commissaire, car, uh, commissaire motorbike over here off the screen, like there, is um, another motorbike, neutral service, which I think stopped. We're going to get into that in a minute. Van Aert sees it. As always, cyclists draft the like the motorbikes that go ahead of them. So nothing too crazy. Van Aert sees it, pulls out, nothing too major. At this moment, doesn't look like a big incident. We'll keep going. Then you can see again, the motorbike's more in view. Van der Poel realizes this quite late. Look at the angle of his bike here. It's pretty acute. Um, and he, he, you know, he's really leaning over because he realizes he's gonna hit it. If you look at like how Van Aert's bike was, not really that lent over. Van der Poel's properly like leaning it over. Then we keep seeing it. he's like that is properly lent over like that's like you're taking a corner not just sort of veering out the way no real sign then we keep seeing this and this motorbike has literally come to a stop here at this moment alaphilippe is obscured you can't see him um but judging from this you know alaphilippe has to do a real um big extension like if you ever run with other people if like one person does one little movement everyone else has to keep following and then like you know the last person sometimes if you don't if you're not switched on the movement can be really big when you have to go up but the first person just just a small subtle change of direction and this is what you can see here that like van Aert does a subtle change of direction van der Poel didn't realize so then had to do a quicker one and then at this point they're all round and here you'd expect alaphilippe to do the same he's really good at bike handling just you know quick drop of the shoulder and he'd be out of the way no worries um but that didn't happen Alaphilippe now, I think, has seen the motorbike. And look where he is. He's so close. And this is what I mean, the time. And his bike's going straight. Like, look at that. There's no angle on it. He's not leaning. And I think he was on the radio, like, talking, which is why he had he had one hand off his bar. So I assume he had the left hand brake on, which was, for him, the front brake, obviously, because he's he's blowing European. So he was having like that and then was speaking on the radio, which I think mom momentarily he couldn't see. And then... You know, now at this point, he's going pretty much straight on. His look, eyes are looking at Van der Poel, so he's probably realized, oh, I actually need to change direction. Then this is the point where it's too late. His bike doesn't change, and he's like, if you look at his bike, so he comes on screen where the pointer is, next pointer, straight, next point is straight, it's too late then, because he can't swap out the way because they're going, what, 50k an hour? This guy might be going 10, so the, the difference in speed is huge. Then at that point here, you can see he starts to raise his leg up like he's trying to swerve the bike, but he's just too close. It's hard to tell the distance here, but it's just too close. And then his bike gets hooked. Um, you can see the wheel goes the other way and then uh, again hits and he goes flying. So I guess the ultimate question is whose responsibility is it? And if we keep going to the end here, you'll see this guy here, this neutral service car, I think is the main re reason why they crashed. I'm not blaming anyone, but I think I think it's just a racing incident. I don't think it's anyone's fault, but my my theory is there's not a long shot, but this guy may be pulled over a lot because he's going to go and slot in behind because there's a 5 second gap, right? So he pulls over a lot. You can see this guy's looking behind. Maybe he could hear there was a crash probably. Um and then the commissaire is like following him, not expecting him to stop, slams on the brakes. Right, probably quicker than expected. Van Aert's not expecting that, but pulls out. And then you can see here, like Van der Poel, if we go back all the way, Van der Poel here, you know, properly leaning out. And Alaphilippe, because he's half, like, not concentrating. And I'm not blaming Alaphilippe. Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on bike races. Like, you have to be sometimes not be 100% concentrating. Like, everyone is, you know, when you're eating, you're always 100% concentrating. He's on the radio, not 100% concentrating. And then, you know, it happens so quick because they're going 50k an hour. And then that's the result. I think ultimately, um, it's not really anyone's fault. Um, 
apart from maybe this guy, but he probably looked in his mirror and didn't mm, assume the commissaire knew, because commissaire probably told him to stop in there. So it's probably like just a bit of miscommunication on that part. And then Van Aert just probably maybe didn't point it out as much as he should have done, but then maybe he didn't, he just saw everyone was concentrating. Like it's a race, it's not a club run, you don't need to point things out. And then I think Van der Poel in some ways, maybe again, he, he wasn't really concentrating either. So he had to move late. So then Alaphilippe has to move late. Um, but anyway, I think it, it's really unfortunate um, and it's super sad. But I think, you know, you here you can see how Philippe did have his hand off the handlebar. So again, maybe that contributed. I think there's a lot of contributing issues. Um, but for me, I think it was really unfortunate for the race because it would have been really interesting to see Alaphilippe trying to attack the two sort of sprinty, sprinters um, and see uh, what would have happened up, you know, the Quermont and the, and the, um, and the Pattersburg because I think it, it, they definitely would have to go to try and drop them. Um, so, yeah, th those are my thoughts. Obviously, leave yours below. Um, and let me know what you think, who caused it, was it just a racing accident, etc, etc. So cheers for watching, hope you did enjoy, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.